Hi guys, welcome to this module on Microsoft Teams. In this session, we're going to look at how to use Teams as an online classroom, how to use the planner in Teams, and how to use OneNote in Teams. So first of all, these are my Teams, down this left-hand side. Top one, project, training, Excel training, Word training, and PowerPoint training. Now within each team, as I've mentioned before, you have channels, so these this team, PowerPoint has three channels. General is the generic one, which comes when you create a team. Examples is a channel that I've created by clicking here, add channel. Likewise, training manual is also a channel. Now within channels, if I click on this one in Excel, examples, you have tabs across the top. The first one is showing posts. So I'll click on this one. Click on this one. You can see if there's been any posts, you will see those. But so there's a few things happening there. In examples, you have tabs across the top. Posts, files is the second tab. So there should be some files there, Excel files that I've uploaded. These are all the Excel files. And then you've got a wiki that you can add some documentation there. And you can see there I've added a tab called Excel. So when I click onto this tab, it's loading up a particular file, which I can um, set people off doing as an exercise. This is an exercise or practice file, which I've set already. Now to do that, you just basically click on this little plus symbol, select Excel. Um, so I'll call this exercise one. And then from my list of Excel files, I find the file that I want, which happens to be that top one. Save that. And then it creates a tab. And when you open that tab, it shows you the exercise. So this would be the exercise that needs to be um, created by the class. It's already been completed, this one. And that one could be another one. So you could have a few different tabs with different stages of your course um, populate across the top there. Now to create a channel, it's as simple as this. Down the bottom there, you create a channel. So create a team first, and then build that from scratch, um, public, and then you give it a name. So this one is going to be Physio Training. And you can fill this in if you want. Um, create, and then you add people to your channel, or to your team, and then you add your channel. So let's add the people, Dave, Jones, Daniel Saxton, Ashley Hawksworth, and Gary Black. And then you add those, and including myself, there's five people in the team. Close this, and then you're ready to start adding channels. There's your generic one. So if I add a click on this and add a channel so I'll call this one training manual again you've got a description option add and then that creates the channel at the bottom there and then you get straight away as soon as you create a channel other than that other than the general one you get the option for planner and OneNote so let's have a look at planner first off if I click on planner it's a very simplistic project management tool. So um, call this course development. Um, save it as that. Now how Planner works is this. You basically create buckets and with inside buckets you add tasks. So if I call this first one development, and then add another one, call this um, testing. And then add another one, scroll to the right a little bit and call this production. Within each of these buckets, you can then add tasks. So if I go back to the left and add a task under development, I can call this um, develop strategy 
and I can assign people to it. So Alana, me and Ashley and Dave, and then just click away and then add that task. And I could move that task if it's in the wrong place, but I'll just leave it there for now. And you've got the options to put labels, colored labels, I'll put that pink. So you've got a pink label on it. And you can complete that by ticking this option. You can go into this and see a bit more detail. So let's put this to a urgent. Let's do a start date as today and put it down as in progress. You can add notes, you can add items, attachments and comments. I'll just close that one off. Yeah, just close that one off. And then a new one for testing, add task. So this could be test product. Um, set due date, so it's due on the 15th. Assign it to Dave Jones and that's it. Add task and then I can add a new task. So that was test product. I could then have market product. Uh, due date is the 21st and assign that to Gary Black and then add task and so on and so on. And that's how you use Planner. And notice there's a tab across the top for me. So I've got files and course development. Now in Planner, you've got the option to show these boards as they're called, or you can click on charts and then it shows you those things in chart view uh, or schedule and it shows you those same tasks in calendar view so this is quite a simple sort of project management tool but very very easy to use so that was planner now if we go back onto the, the front screen again where the posts normally appear you've also got OneNote so OneNote is like a file of facts so if we click on that it gives you the option to create a new OneNote or use the default one. So this is your training notebook default team book. So every time you create a new uh, channel, you get a notebook. So create that. So basically you've got sections and pages within sections. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom there, you should have the option to create uh, a new page it's not showing me that so I'll just open it up in the app I've actually got the actual program on my computer that's why it's giving me the second option but I'll just open continue to browser and then it's got sections there so section one is going to be um, product design okay and section two is going to be product testing okay now within these sections you can have pages so pages untitled page the title is picked up from this so if I type in um, product design phase one and then you have all the functionality of a word processor now to enter lists or insert video documentation and things like that relevant to this so I'll just put a, a simple list um, task one task two task three so on and so on go back and add a new page so the second page would be phase two and the same sort of thing would go on again you would fill in this information and if we go to product testing there is no pages under product testing so we'd have test phase one and then maybe add another page and then test phase two so you're building up your OneNote book by using sections and then creating the elements within the section the pages within the section and if you look at the top here you've got the options to insert files so insert as an attachment, so I'll choose a file, just pick any old file that will do. Insert, you can do that, you can insert pictures, insert from file, choose the file, 
So we need to go from into examples and photos. Waterloo, my little dragoon. There he is, my little dragoon. And then insert that, brings that in. You've got links to files, bring it into audio and so on and so on. All this is fairly straightforward. You've got drawing tools if you want to draw. Um, if you've got a pen, it would be a lot easier. Um, if you go back to view, you've got all this sort of stuff you can do on view. And you can open this in the browser. And if you download the app, the complete program, um, you get a lot more functionality than this. So that is the OneNote, how that works. And obviously this is shared amongst the team and in individuals can enter sections or edit sections and everybody will see that. Now, when you create a team, like we've just created Visio Training, it automatically creates a group in SharePoint in Office 365. So if I just quickly go into Office 365 SharePoint, it should have created a group for me. Um, there it is, Visio Training. And then you can see that. And all the other ones that I've already created, Project Word and Excel are already there. So you are automatically going to create this group in SharePoint and your notebooks and things through SharePoint. Okay, so this is one I did earlier, so it's just opened that same one. You can see that. So if I just go back, you can see it from SharePoint, and I could also click into it there. But back to Teams, and let's look at um, coming out of this now and looking at doing a classroom. So you've got all your resources there for your training. People can access this stuff. But to do a, a classroom, you do need to either schedule a meeting via a new meeting and put the title, the course title, add the people that are going to attend in this and then send it. Or you can do meet now, which is what I'm going to do. Now, because the way I've got my computer set up here, there's going to be a bit of feedback. So when I do this, I'm going to knock off the sound. Hopefully there won't be any feedback, but bear with me if there is. So I'll go meet now. I'll... The video's not on. I'll knock the sound off on there as well, and then I'll join it. So one of the one of the features I quite like about this is if I just put the video back on, this is quite cool. You can show background effects where even though I'm sat in my house, I can click on this and then apply. And instead of sitting in my house, I'm now sat in this fairly nice looking office so i'll just knock the video off for a minute and then what i want to do is invite people to this training session so type in the name up there and now it's calling the other person so i'm going to answer voice only and then i'm going to mute so I've muted the mic so it doesn't feed back, but you can see, um, I can see Tanya there now in this meeting. So what I want to do is share my screen. So I'm going to share my screen. So we are going to look at Excel. So I could get, if I do the desktop, that means they would have access or would see all my programs, which wherever I clicked, but I'm just going to click on Excel. So they're restricted to Excel. Now on, um, Tanya's machine, she can see my screen exactly the same as this. So I'm typing away and she can see exactly that. And then she should be copying me now in Excel. And I find out that she's not copying me. So what I need her to do is share her screen with me. So I need to stop. So you would be talking this through. So I need to stop sharing my, my screen. So I'll stop sharing it by clicking on this little X there. So I've stopped and now she's going to share her screen. And she's going to click on Excel and then I should see her screen coming up and hopefully be able to show her and help her with the Excel if she's got any problems. Wait for it a second and here it comes. So this is her machine. 
Now, for me to help her, I need to potentially take control of her screen. Now, whether you've got this feature available or not is dependent on whether you came into Teams through the um, app, the desktop app, or whether you came into Teams through the online version. The online version does not allow you to take control. So I'll request control. She should get accept options at the top. Um, at the moment, it's not coming up, so she must have logged on via the web browser. So I'm not going to be able to get control of this, but I can still see her screen and I can still talk her through what the issue is. So basically telling her to click into C2 um, or B2 and pull that across. Now, I'm just going to break this call for a moment. Hang up on the call. So I've come out of that and she's now no longer in that meeting. We both come out of that. We're back to Teams. So using this as a classroom is a very, very uh, good tool. And you can have up to four videos at once on your screen if you want to see people. But like I've said before, if you have the video on, it uses bandwidth and then that can slow the connection down. If you have just the sound on, you still see the icons for the people. So you still know they're on there. And when they talk, their icon becomes active and you can share your screen and then they could share their screens and you can see if they're having issues or you can look at their screens if they're doing any exercises that you've pre-planned you can look at their screens and see if they're doing it correctly um, but that's the end of this session and i hope you've enjoyed it and thank you for your time